Hi, my name is Courtney Patterson. I'm the creator of Pattern Projector, a free and open source tool for calibrating your projector for sewing patterns. If you find this tool useful, please consider buying me a coffee or supporting via PayPal. I'm going to go over everything you need to know for using this tool, starting with how do you install. So up here, you can press the install app button. Depending on your device, you'll get a different prompt here. I'm on a computer with uh, Chrome, so I'm just going to press install. It'll install the app and then I'm going to go into full screen and we'll start calibrating. Oh, if you want to change your language, you can do so over here. We've had amazing people translate this into many different languages now. Start calibrating. Okay. And then the first thing you want to do is enter full screen. So you get all of this real estate for projecting your pattern. You can hide the menu up here if you want to calibrate all the way behind the menu. I don't bother with that though. Invert the colors. Sometimes your projection will look better with different color schemes. So just click through and pick one that you like. Up here you'll enter the width and height when you're calibrating in either inches or centimeters depending on what your mat has. This is the reset calibration button. So if you find your calibration grid in a funky spot like this and you just want to reset, press reset and you can start from square one. Here's the move tool. So the move tool you can use to calibrate um, with more fine tuned movements. And over here projects, this is what you do after you're done calibrating. Info page will just bring you back to the main page here. Um, but we, we don't want that. So we'll go back into full screen. And then here, this is just mail from me. So it's a nice place where I can post um, relevant content without having to go through social media. Okay, so let's start calibrating. To calibrate your projector, you'll want to match the grid that's on your screen to the grid that is on your mat. So to do that, you can drag the corners of this grid. You can also drag the edges and you can grab it in the middle and move the whole thing. So I'm going to grab each corner here and make a fairly large rectangle you want to make a big rectangle, but don't worry if you don't make it your full mat size, you will still be calibrated outside of your mat. You just want to make it large so you have the best accuracy that you can get. So now that I have made a rectangle, I want to fine tune each corner to make sure that it matches very well. So I'm doing that right now by using my keyboard to, uh, the arrow keys on my keyboard to move the selected corner and press tab to go to the next corner. So if you don't have a keyboard, you can also use the move tool. Up here in the top menu, press show move tool and it'll show up on the right here. These arrows here are to move the corner. The button in the middle will move you to the next corner. So since this corner is already accurately calibrated, we'll press the center button and that'll bring us to the next corner. And we can move it around a smidge to get it nicely lined up and then to the next corner that looks pretty good okay now the issue that we have is that the width and the height of this grid are not accurate so on the mat you can see here this bottom line is 33 minus 2 so it should be 31 in width so i can input this number at the top here and it will match up on the vertical. And then to the side here, we have 19 minus two, no wait, 19 minus one. So we need 18 for the height here. You should really pull out your measuring tape and measure this grid in real life. Um, I just don't have a projected output right now. This is just a picture that I've overlaid onto. Okay, so that looks pretty accurate. You can see these lines in the middle here aren't perfectly lined up but they're very close, so I'd be happy to cut with this. You can try and fine tune the corners a little bit more to try and get it slightly more lined up, but I wouldn't bother doing that if I were starting a cutting session. Okay, and if you're having any problems with the lines not matching up, there's a calibration troubleshooting guide here with common scenarios for why it won't match up. In most cases, you just need to pull out your measuring tape and make sure it's measuring accurately. Okay, now we can project. Open it up. 
And oh no, what's this error message? So this is popping up because unfortunately when you pick a pattern using the file picker, the browser will automatically pop you out of full screen. So we need to get back into full screen and most of the time I can't do that automatically for you. So you have to press this button here to get back into full screen so you're correctly calibrated. You need to be projecting in the same mode that you calibrated in. So if you calibrated in full screen, you need to project in full screen. Okay, so you can see here that this pattern is one that's supposed to be printed out and taped together. So since we are projecting digitally instead of printing, we're going to have to assemble these pieces. So the simplest way I find to do this is to just increase the number of columns here until things start to look like they're lining up. So I'll just click, click, click until things, okay, there we go. See, it all just kind of magically comes together there. And now let's zoom out and we will see if it all looks good. So the top here looks good, but unfortunately this part here is not lined up. So it looks like we need to have a blank page here and a blank page here. So what we will do for that, so this is the last two pages, as you can see here, it says add zeros for blank pages. So we want to go from page one to 12, and then we wanna put in one, two blank pages. Then we wanna put in page 13 and page 14. So I just did, we've got one to 12 here, zero, zero, 13, 14. And this is in a four column layout that we have here is changing from columns to rows. So in this configuration, we're going from left to right. And then the next row is from left to right. If we switch from columns to rows, then instead we'll be going from top to bottom, next column over top to bottom. Um, so it's not as common, but for some places in the world, it is a configuration that's used for lining up your pieces. So we'll go back to columns because that's what we need for this pattern. And we don't need to do any horizontal or vertical overlap for this pattern. So we'll leave that off and I'll give you another example after. So next we'll go to the layer menu. So that shows all the layers that are in this pattern. I usually just press hide all to start and then pick out my size, put in the pattern info, and then we're good to go. This here is the scale menu. So you can use it to change the scale on a pattern. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So if we add in the grid overlay, so this matches your calibration grid. You can see right now this square is the two by two square. If we were to change the pattern scale to be double the size, so two times the size, you can see now that this calibration square here is four by four instead of two by two. So the pattern has doubled in size. You can use this if you want to make custom sizes of your pattern. For example, if you were making doll clothes out of an adult pattern you can bring down the size dramatically. So we could bring it down here to, I don't know, half the size. And then we'll find the pieces again there. There we go. You can see it's tiny now. Okay, but we'll put the scale back to one. So it's just the accurate size. Okay, now I will go over the tools up here. So overlay options, as I just showed, you can add the grid. So the grid is showing the calibration grid here. We'll turn that off. Border is the border of the calibration grid that you made and when you were calibrating. Paper sheet shows uh, the outline of a sheet of paper. So if you wanted to throw down a piece of paper to check calibration, you could do that. Flip lines shows where the horizontal and vertical flip happens from. So to show you here, if we put this test square here and we're going to flip horizontally, you can see it flips along this line here. If we flip vertically, it flips along this line here. So we'll go back to where we were. And then the next option is the wrong side. So when you flip over your pattern, all of these red dots will show up. That's showing that your pattern is flipped over. 
Okay, next thing we could do is change the line weight. So usually patterns that aren't created for projecting uh, have too thin of lines to be able to see in a projected output. So you can change the thickness of the line by um, choosing one of the options there. You might want to play around with them to see which size works well for your pattern. And then, oh, and let's just hide this menu to the side here. Okay, we've already gone over flip horizontally. You've seen flipping horizontally, flipping vertically. You can do these with these buttons or you can just press H or V to do those flips. There's also rotation, so we can rotate 90 degrees or press R. Reset, sorry, center and reset will bring the pattern to the center and reset any sort of transformations on any rotations or flips. Magnify, so for patterns that were not created for projectors, the text is often too small. So you can press magnify, press down here. You can move around while you're still holding down on your mouse um, and read the pattern. And then as soon as you're done reading, you can click. You may have noticed that text keeps sort of popping up here. Um, so that is a feature where if you hover over text, it will magnify it automatically. So you can read it. This only works with certain patterns though. So the text in the pattern needs to be text and not an image, um, whether it's a vector image or a raster image. Okay, next is zoom out. So zoom out will take you out so you can see the whole pattern. And then if you want to move around to two different pieces, click on that piece and it'll bring that piece to the center. And then the next one is the line tool. So you can draw a line on your pattern. And the way that I use this is I start out by drawing lines on all of my pattern pieces. So we'll go around and draw them on the green lines. And you can see as I'm drawing them here, this number is increasing here. So we have two lines drawn so far, we'll go out. Go over to this piece, draw a line, and then last piece here, we'll draw a line on the fold line here. Okay, so now let's go through all of the options in the line tool here, line tool menu. So we have four lines drawn, so I know I need to cut out four pieces. So we will bring, this is called bring next line to center, uh, so that will bring a line that we've drawn to the center of your mat and it aligns it with the uh, calibration grid that you have lined up here horizontally so that you know that the green line is horizontal with the mat. Okay, so once I cut out this piece, then what I would do is delete the line and bring the next line to the center and then delete that line, bring the next line to the center. And you can see now I know I only have two pieces left um, this align to center, it, it just makes it so this line gets put to the center here if you're not using the same flow that I'm using. Okay, so delete that line, we're on to the last line here. Okay, so um, what we can do is flip along this line. So if we wanted to cut out this pattern piece unfolded, we would cut out this side around here. And then once we're done cutting up to here, then we would flip along the line and then it flips it so that pattern pieces down here now so we can continue cutting all the way around here to cut the whole piece out and then um, there is this move pattern by line length which you can use to make uh, pattern adjustments like lengthening or shortening a pattern piece you, there's not really an example of that with this pattern so I'll show you on another pattern and as you can see the menus just disappeared they meant Leaves disappear after a timeout, so you uh, have the most amount of space you need for cutting here. Okay, so let's delete that one and we'll bring up another pattern. So open up another example here. Okay, let's open up a new pattern here. Go back into full screen. And then, um, so something I didn't mention before is plus and minus here. So what you can do with these is move pages um, from the front to the back. So sometimes there is uh, an instruction page on the first page. So if you want, you can press plus and it will just put it at the end here. That's not the case here though. So let's just put this back in the regular order. 
Okay, you can see there's a huge gap in between these pages. So we want to close the vertical um, space between them. So we want to increase the vertical overlap. I like to just press this plus here until these lines match up. So in this one, it's got a huge overlap. So this might take a minute here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Magnify to make sure. Yeah, I think that's lined up. Okay, now we can export this PDF. So we have this all stitched together in an exported PDF. And then what we can do is convert it to an SVG if we'd like. We have SVG support in this version. So I made a little web app here that's optimized for uh, sewing patterns, but if you want, you can use any tool that converts a PDF to an SVG. So choose the stitch together version, open it up and then download it. And then we can go back to Pattern Projector and open up the SVG. One of the reasons why you may want to use an SVG instead of a PDF is on lower power devices, it will load a lot faster. You might notice that sometimes when you open up a pattern, it takes up to a minute to load. And then when you're moving around, it slowly follows after you and doesn't move fast. Um, and that's a good case for switching to SVG. Also, if you're editing it anyway, if you're making alterations in an SVG editor beforehand, then might as well just keep it in SVG. Okay, and then let's bring up the line tool here and we will draw a line here. So I'm holding shift here to keep this line in the vertical. And then we're gonna make a one inch alteration here. So we want to lengthen the torso of this top um, by one inch. So what we would do here is cut the top part here and then press move the pattern by the line length and that moves the pattern down by one inch. So then you would continue to cut down this area here and then your piece is extended by one inch. If you need to move it back up to where it was to say uh, cut a notch or put a marking in, then you can do that. And then you can always push back down to do any marks or notches at the bottom as well. And then when we're all done with that, delete, and we are good to go. Oh, actually, uh, there's one more thing I wanted to show on here. If you wanted to uh, rotate this so you're cutting it on the bias, you can press shift and then draw a 45 degree angle here. And then once you have a line in 45 degree angle, then all you have to do is press align to center and then it rotates the piece by 45 degrees. You can do that by any angle that you'd like. Last but not least, if you're still having any issues after watching this video, at the bottom on the home page, there's links to the Facebook group for projectors for sewing, and also there's the one page guide for projector sewing. So the one page guide is amazing for going over how to set up your projector physically. And the Facebook group is great for any troubleshooting that you have at all. It's an amazing community and that's the place to go if you're having any issues. Thank you so much for your support and I hope you have fun projector sewing.